This podcast may contain Star Trek Discovery spoilers, talk of Pon Far, and interspecies relations. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to the premiere episode of Dissecting Discovery. Woo! All right, this is the podcast where we talk about dissecting Discovery, Discovery, Star Trek, the new show on CBS All Access, nothing but Star Trek. So we had the premiere of the Star Trek Discovery episode on CBS, and they followed it up on CBS All Access. The very first episode was the Vulcan Hello. In general, just in general, what do you think? Great, give it a grade on 1 to 10, 10 being the best. The very first episode? Yeah, the very first episode. The Vulcan Hello. Just that episode alone. How would you grade it? Let's see. <laughs> I said 1 to 10 with 10 being the best. <laughs> you say a C. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Uh, 1 to 10. I Well, so that a 70, you're saying? I, I, seven. A 7? A 7? A seven. Seven. Yeah. I, I'll, give it, I'll give it an 8. I'll give it an 8. I, I thought it was a little bit better than that. I'll give it an 8. Um, lots of things that, that I liked. Some things I didn't like. Um, probably the... Probably the thing that I didn't like the most, which has nothing to do with the show itself, was the way that CBS handled it. I'm just not happy with the way they handled the whole thing. I, I, if you watch the episode, by the way, like we said, we're giving away spoilers, so we're going to talk about it. So if you haven't seen it, tough. Um, but Well, that was rude. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. But, you know, hey, we have to dissect the show, so we're going to have to talk about it. What are you, Mike Tomlin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's a two-parter. And I get how they want to tease you so you'll subscribe to CBS yeah, All Access. Exactly, yeah. But the way the episode and the following episode ended, they should have aired it all as one, and that would have been an even better teaser. They should have done a two-hour premiere. Yes. Because this actually, in my opinion, the two together still hasn't started the series. Exactly. You're exactly it, right. It's just telling you... Here's where we're beginning. It's it's Here's like a things. prologue. Okay. Yeah. Now I got a couple of questions for you. Sure. Sure. All right. Now the, the timeline I know is very close to Kirk's time is before that. Ten but years this, prior. Okay, but this is oh, it's ten years prior. Yes. Okay, so this is definitely after Enterprise. After Enterprise, yes. It takes it takes place ten year approximately. I'm not saying exactly. Approximately ten years to TOS, the original series. Okay, so we're talking. All right, so that. Yeah, that well, I have a problem with the timeline, though. Glad, glad you brought that up. So, <clears throat> if you're if you're watching the show, Michael Burnham is basically the star of this show, and uh, she is a ward of Sarek, and she's human, but she's brought up Vulcan. Yes. In the episode, they do some flashback scenes where seven years. It gets a little complicated, so follow along here. Seven years prior to what we're watching. She went on the USS Shenzhou. Right. And, and all of this time, Spock never spoke of a half sister or a, a, anybody, and he would have had to have known her. Okay. Well, we're, well, we're going to get into a lot of that because yeah. it's just like um, the fifth film, The Final Frontier. Yeah. When we find out all of a sudden he's got a. Cybok has a half brother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's nothing unusual. But. My my mm. my concern was at first when I first started watching it, I, I couldn't place the timeline, and they said they were using the transporter, and I said, "Wait a minute, we just watched Enterprise, and they would they would definitely never use the the." the well, at the end of the at end of Enterprise, they started using the they transporter. Start, yeah, for I know humans. that, but but in, in the beginning, yeah. but then I started thinking. I said, "I think I think Dennis told me this is very much more closer." Yeah, and then as I heard the dialogue, I said, "Okay, yeah, right. I, now I know where we're at." As far as um, the fleet goes, but um, oh, there's so much things to talk. All right, let's about. let's break down this first episode. So it it starts off um, with uh, the USS Shenzhou, and they're investigating a, a damaged satellite near a binary star, star system on the edge of Federation space. And the first officer of the Shenzhou is Michael Burnham, mm-hmm. 
and that character is played by I gotta oh uh, which reminds me I want to ask you is, is is she the one that was in Walking Dead yes she's from Walking Dead yeah so she yeah. Sonequa Martin Green oh so she must have got executed yeah she got she... killed in the Walking Dead yeah Holly and I watched that show and I, uh, well it, I haven't I don't say anything yeah. I haven't seen anything since uh, yeah. Glenn got his brains beat up by, oh you're uh, way behind then uh, yeah yeah. So. Yeah, so uh, uh, Sinequa is uh, Michael Berman, and she's the first officer of the USS Shenzhou, and uh, they refer to who a lot well, I like as a number one. So um, she's basically going to be the star of the series from what I'm led to believe. It takes uh, the first officer perspective, which would be her. Um, but anyway, so um, they, they find this uh, object uh, that's really old floating in space, and uh, somehow they can't quite... Uh, um, get a, a visual of it, which I find a little odd. They, the sensors don't don't take it. Well, because there's some kind of a, a quasar or something in the background that's causing radiation. Well, they don't know what's going on, right? Exactly, right. and it turns out that it somehow it's this vessel is being cloaked, and it turns out that um, it's a Klingon vessel, and um, uh, she is sent out to investigate alone in her suit, which I like. That's very. She wasn't sent out; she volunteered well, yeah, to go out. But she she goes out. To, Get it right. Oh, I'm sorry. She goes out to investigate, and uh, I very much liked that the suit that was very reminiscent of the motion picture. Yes. Yeah, I thought that was that was kind of cool. So she goes out to investigate it, and she's standing on it, uh, looking at it, and uh, some. Uh, Entity comes out, and it turns out to be a Klingon, and some battle ensues, and the Klingon uh, gets killed. And then that's when all hell breaks loose. And uh, they it turns out that uh, Tukuvma, or Tukuvma, is this Kales follower who's trying to get the um, uh, Klingons back together. Apparently, they're... Okay, first of all, slow down, because you're going to screw up my train of thought here. Let's let's talk about right, that right there. Okay. First, first of all. She goes out, and she's standing on this thing. And yeah, he comes out, and there's no dialogue. She just tries to, you know, hi, I'm from the Federation, right? And bam, he attacks her. Well, that's what Klingons do, but right. yeah, okay. Now, later in the episode, she's saying to the captain, "Um, you just gotta, you just gotta kill the Klingons. You gotta cut the head off the snake." Yeah. And that was something I've never remembered in all Star Trek, unless I'm stupid and I'm forgetting something. I don't remember anything about the Vulcans being the type that would just attack. They weren't. Vulcans were not always peaceful. In fact, they claimed to be even I, more of a yes, warrior race that, than the Klingons. Yes, that I remember that. But yeah. she's claiming because of her education growing up, being right. you know Sarek's adopted yeah. daughter, that if if you want to if you want to scare off the Klingons, you got to just kill somebody right right boom well i don't i, I don't think and I, I don't think she meant you got to kill somebody i think she meant you have to strike first i think that's what she meant in other no, words she shows def- shows who's boss i don't know I, I i i don't think that's what it was meant to portray i think it was meant to portray that you need to strike first and if somebody happens to die in that process oh well but you need to show you need a show of force because the klingons will think you're pansies if you don't i think that's what was okay, well, was, that, was meant by that me. was a little bit weird to me because yeah. i'd never heard in, in all the Vulcan lore, them to be yeah. betrayed that way. That right. They were always... Shoot the first, always, ask questions later. That was, yeah, wasn't the their Vulcans philosophy. were always, you know, logic yeah. And, yeah. and no emotion or anything. Yeah, not hitting. just boom, you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, yeah. Um, but we get a we get a good look at the new, Vul- at the new uh, um, Klingons here. And I think they're kind of taking... I'm not saying that you invented it, but last week uh, we talked about this and... Uh, on our regular podcast, folks, the Fountain of Thought podcast, uh, we talked about you um, thinking that there were different um, ethnicities of Vulcans, and that's why some of them look different. And I think that's where they went. Yes, you- except they blew it when they started to say, we're trying to get all the uh, the houses together. All the houses yeah. together. And I'm saying, well, that just blew my theory out of the water, because if the houses are all the same, they all look the same again, well, it's just... What, well, I don't think they do. And I think... I think there's a, a little bit of things. I think some of the I think they're trying to make the Vulcans. I mean, I keep saying the Vulcans. I, they're trying to make the Klingons look a little more like they did in Next Gen. They're definitely not going to make them look like they did in TOS because of the fact. And this is a little thing that gets kind of gray in the Star Trek canon. But uh, apparently, the original Star Trek series, the Klingons that in there were mutated because they tried uh, to make them 
tried to breed the human into them or I don't know. Remember in um um in Deep Space 9 they talk about that when they were on the Klingon vessel when they did the um uh, Tribble episode yeah. and they said where are the Klingons? Those are Klingons. Well, yeah, they're trying to explain it because they didn't have the Right. Uh, and then in Next Gen they went with um Dr. Nooney and yeah, Sung. But no, but from the, the Star Trek the motion picture Yes. All the way through. Yes, they all the had a certain look. Look they they were similar. Right. Okay. As far as TOS, right. TOS, yes. That's because no budget. Right. Okay. So that's where, you know, we just They messed with it a little bit to make it look yeah. like it get blended. Yeah, they they put the ridges in yeah. because cuz I remember reading an article saying that when they did Star Trek the motion picture, that's yeah. what they originally wanted the Klingons right. to look like, but, but they, couldn't they didn't have it. the they didn't have the budget yeah. for the right. for the uh right. show. Okay. Well, which explains a lot because uh, as the uh, TOS progressed in episode after episode, all of a sudden everybody's driving a uh, Klingon vessel. Yeah. All of a sudden the Romulan vessels don't yeah. exist anymore. Right, right, right. So anyway. Um, so I, I liked I liked the idea that they had different houses. And then when we see them, there are 12 of them. And I counted them. You only see seven. So there are still more houses of Klingons we haven't seen yet. They're trying to unite all 12 of them, but we only see seven of them. And then six of the ones that we do see are holographic, so you really can't get, you know, right. good. And one of them is a woman, which I thought was a little odd, because I didn't think back then that the women were well, because the leader of a house. Yeah, but that, again, that's... You think that's politics, being that's, politically yeah, correct that they're, they're doing that? Yeah. yeah. So um, we see them, and they do look, even in the holograms, they do look slightly different. Some of the ridges are different. And then what I like is... Um, uh, Tukufma is, I mean, he's like dark, 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 black, kind of with a little gold tinge to him. And he's really dark. And then they introduce this albino Klingon, yeah. which I thought was really cool, who's the house of no one. He has, you know, there's no one. So Which I, means he could be a Romulan for all we know. He could be, yeah. Uh, so I, I liked what they did with it. Um, okay, but let's stop there with the Klingons because this is another thing that bothered me about the first episode. Okay. We've been watching Star Trek since 1965. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I haven't been, but it's been no, on. But since you then. know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't like the fact that we had to sit there and listen. You know, they're they're producing this gorgeous special effects and everything, but yet they're making the Klingons talk and you're making you read subtitles. Oh, see, I love that. I don't. That's the I part I love. I don't mind it for a short bit to get the idea. That they're talking different language, but there comes a time when you're going to just cut that and go back. Well, to- I think they will in future episodes. I think because we did we did because, learn that Klingons speak English and they did speak yeah, but, in English. Yeah, but when they finally did speak in English, they spoke such bad English you didn't know what they were saying. Well, I think I think it was the Tukovma there. I think it was him because he, he, when he, he spoke, like, yeah. he talked like I am. Yeah, well, he, so- he, he sounded like he sounded like somebody with a mouthful of Swedish fish. Yeah, he didn't. But I think that was the character. I think that was his character to it. Um, I did look at a little behind the scenes stuff in that, and they did talk about um, in his preparation for that role, and they gave him the pronunciation of how to pronounce the Klingon words and everything, and he was trying to say it like he was reading it off a script would, and they told him. Put your own spin on it. Do whatever you want with it. Right. And that's what he did. He made it very chopped up and very plain I, and again, boring. I don't have a problem with it if, it, if this was a brand new species. You know, a brand new species we never heard of. Okay, but okay. you got to remember that they are introducing this to a lot of people that haven't seen this before. There are people that are going to watch this that haven't seen it before. I've never saw Star Trek. That have probably never seen a Klingon in Star Trek. Oh, come on. No way. I'm sure there are. Well, uh, yes. Are there sure, Klingons yes. in the new movies? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. At the at the in one of them, but it's, it's not. Yeah, but it's not like a, it's a whole. It's, you know, it, well, you the, see them briefly. The point is, is that the Star Trek universe is is enormous, built on the Star Trek followers. Yeah, there's Klingons. I mean, yes, the there's going to be there's yeah. going to be newcomers coming to the show and and watching it. But I, I'm telling you, it's not that's well, not I the people are going to save the show. I got the t- show is right. going to make it. It's going to be the, the the actual people who love Star Trek. Okay. 
I didn't mind it. I liked the fact that they went with the Klingon language and they did the subtitles. I thought that that lent a more realistic feel for it, made it more believable. But how, I can, liked you, it. how can you sit and read while you're trying to look at all the nice... Well, luckily it's on streaming so I can rewind it and watch it again. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying. I do know what you're saying, and it, I, it, it becomes bothersome at some times. But I just don't understand if you're going to go through all this trouble right, of I having will, all these special effects, and then you're going to put subtitles. All right, here's – and I've seen this happen before, and what I liked on it is this is an effect that I've – and I don't remember where I saw this. It might have been Star Trek, but I, I think it was Star Trek, but I don't, I don't know if I remember. What they did is they focused on – let's say they focused on uh, Takuvma – He's the Klingon. They focus him. He's speaking Klingon. The camera slowly zooms in on him, and they zoom into his mouth. And as they zoom into his mouth, it changes to English. Wasn't that? Didn't they do that in Star Trek? I don't remember, but that's the way you do it, right? And then, then from then on, you, then know, you know the audience right. knows. All right, he's really speaking Klingon, but to make it easier for everyone, we're going to say yeah, it in so English. You can watch the goddamn right. screen, right? And right. Enjoy that's, what's going that's on. That's how I like it. If it would have done it, but I didn't mind it per se. If this happens every episode and they, I got to freaking read it every freaking episode, then yeah, I might be a, a, a little a little upset over it. Um, but for right now, I'm going to cut him a little slack and say it's it's going to be okay. The one thing that I have learned is this entire season is all about the Klingon War. That's what this whole season is about. So there will be episodes that don't deal primarily with it, but this whole arc is this Klingon War. That's the whole season. And supposedly next season will be completely different, and the Klingons won't be the primary focus. Okay, well, That's now, what I've heard. Now, the other thing I didn't like was the fact that when you're writing storylines, especially with all these multiple different Star Trek series we've had out there, you have to remember what where you are. If you're going to base this show before TOS, then you can't sit there and start talking about Kalis and and all this stuff that you learned in Next Generation and 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 beyond. Well, I because, think you I no, think you can. No, I think you can. No. I think you can talk about Kalis. Because not, not to the degree they were doing. I did not like no, that. I no. I don't. Again, all right, we're going to differ because I don't have a problem with that because it's on the Klingon side. This is not on the Federation side. Federations don't know anything about Kalos. They don't. As a viewer, we know, but the Federation doesn't know. So it keeps it keeps the canon alive. It keeps the timeline alive. I I do agree. First of all, we both and I you. You and I both agree that they should have never have done a prequel. We all hate prequels. There's no reason for it. I don't know why they just haven't continued. On after uh, uh, Voyager would be the last, uh, um, yeah, Voyager. That timeline, timeline, yeah. Why they just didn't continue on after that, I don't know. Why we got to retell this. You, you and I have had this discussion before. We're not fond of prequels because we know what's going to happen in the end. We're, it, it's, it makes it difficult for storytelling, especially yeah, something like no Star matter, Trek. No matter what happens, you know that, yeah. you know, let's say our main character, Michael, she gets captured and uh, her, uh, Spock's, what, her cousin? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, technically, they're not related because she's a ward of Sarek. So. Okay. Well, whatever. But, but let's, let's, hypothetically, all of a sudden she gets captured, and Spock sent in to, to rescue her. And, well, let's take Sarek. We know nothing's going to happen to Sarek. Exactly. We know. That's my point. Yeah. Because you already know the characters right. that are going to. That's what I don't like about prequel. But if you're going to sit there and keep screwing around with the same timeline, yeah. it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. It just you know. It, so I, I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm hoping because it was interesting. But I'm I'm hoping it's going to get a little bit more. Well, I, th- I think it will. Back to the. Let's wrap up the Klingons. Um, you didn't like the look. It was over the top. They I didn't. Just, they I didn't mind just, the look. I thought it was. I think they should have just left them alone. They, there was no reason to change it. I, I change it, not change it. It's not the end of me. The one thing that I really didn't like were those stupid uniforms they were in. That's what I'm talking about. I, well, the, not the just characteristics the, I didn't mind so much. The uniforms. It was hell. You can't even come within two feet of them without getting poked with something. I mean, even, they're all even to, even uh, TOS and Next Generation. The uniforms were you know obviously with cloth. During the '60s, but they still had the the sash. Yeah, the across, sash. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they kept to the thing, and the, and the, and the bat lift too. Yeah. those it was were changed. Bigger, yeah, it was way bigger. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's you know, yeah. concentrate on the story. Well, Never mind changing. I I think they're trying to make an impression, and they're they're you know they're making their stamp in the in the Star Trek universe. So some of these things I I quibble with, some of them I I don't. All right, so. 
Anyway, so uh, now we've we've turned out that we found that this uh, Takuvma character uh, wants to unite all the houses, and he feels the only way to do it is to go to war with the Federation because, like we all know in real life, when there's a war, people come together. So that's what his goal is, is to go to war, and he hopes that he's going to going to get the uh, the Klingons back together. That's the the ultimate ultimate goal. What happens now is that um, she gets back to the ship. We don't actually know how uh, um, Burnham gets back to the ship, but she's back to the ship, and she's half irradiated because she... There, I know, that was quasar. weird. They, 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 yeah, they, they just cut to it. Yeah, just yeah. boom. There might have been more that didn't get shown for timeline. I'm not sure. That's the other thing that I want to talk about is... They're still doing it in this 45, 42 to 45 second timeline. They're streaming. There's no TV here. And I know this is being shown, like in Canada, it's being shown in, uh, in, on their regular television. And, uh, I believe it's the Canadian Space Channel is what it, what it's called. So for them, it's like regular TV. Outside of Canada and the US, it's in Netflix. But it's still, it's a streaming show. It's not, you don't have the confines of 42 minutes. So I think they need to get out of that. That's the one thing, If the big criticism I have is they need to get out of that 42-minute structure because I can see how it's built. And that's like every other Star Trek. They need to stop that because you can make it 43, 45, 50, 51, 52. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it depends on the episode. You have no constraints, right? So stop thinking in that that storyline arc that you got to shove it all into 42 minutes that i think is a, is a is a problem for them and i haven't seen it yet but i also think that i mean th- this is supposed to be the adult star trek i think they need to come up i'm not saying they need to you know be naked in every episode but why <laughs> If we're going to have an adult yeah, Star Trek, for the yeah. love of God, well, I can I think, tell you a list of characters yeah, I want I to see naked. But I, I think they, again, it's, it's, it's very television esque. I think they need to to get a little more mature yeah, yeah, with, with with it a little ri- bit. Risque. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah, that's a good word. Um, so she goes back and um, she's uh, in this medical bay being treated. And she gets up and she's running through the the hall saying that, you know, it's the Klingons, it's the Klingons. And so now, you know, red alert, shields go up and it's the Klingons. And we find out the Klingons. And now she's got to um, defend the Federation. I'm sorry, I take it back. There were 24 houses, not 12, 24 houses. So we've we've only seen a few of them. Uh, So now um, they uh, activate this beacon that summons all the Klingon leaders and the 24 houses come and and they say, watch, they're going to say we come in peace when they really don't. To prevent a war, Burnham says that she needs to fire first on the Klingons against the wishes of uh, Captain Georgiou. And what happens is is she comes and she does this um, uh, Vulcan neck pinch, which I thought was cool. Because I've always she, wondered, she learned that. Yes. even though she's a human, right? I've always wondered why are the Vulcans the only one that have mastered this? It never made any sense to me. Why? Why can't you teach this to someone else? So I did think that was cool. She does the Vulcan neck pinch on the on the captain, uh, and the captain goes down, and she comes in and she says, "Fire at the Klingons! Fire at the Klingons!" And then the um, science officer, which I thought was a kind of a cool character. Uh, Doug Jones plays Saru, and Saru is the science officer uh, serving as lieutenant commander, and uh, he's the first Kelpian to enter the Starfleet, and they're a new species that we've never seen before. They basically were hunted as prey, and uh, basically they're they're the cowards of the Federation. They're the yeah. That was the cool how they explained that. The no, no, they, 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 the way they explained it, they were part of a food chain. Yeah, yeah, and they they, they were food, and yeah. and that's the way they, they had to grow up and learn. Right, and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it was it was different. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. So um, he's you know seems a little uppity. I think. Yeah, but that yeah. makes that makes that explains his character, right? Because you know you spend your whole life be waiting for somebody to eat you. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna yeah. be a little paranoid. Yeah. So then. Um, uh, but I was surprised that he didn't want to blast. Them. Yeah, so was I. I was yeah, because like, well, yeah, you, you're going to get eaten. <laughs> you're going to get eaten. <laughs> Shoot first, ask, ask questions, questions later. later. Yeah. So uh, she says, "Fire, fire!" And at the very last second, the captain comes through the bulkhead and the, through the doors and says, "Belay that order!" And then that's pretty much where that episode ends. So now to some numbers, Orville, because we've talked about Orville, how it's um, hit or miss. You loved it. I thought it was kind of okay. Uh, do you know how well Orville did or is doing? How well? 
the numbers. Uh, Orville got 8.6 million viewers and a 2.7 adult demo, which is the 18 to 49. So it's not great, but those are those are respectable numbers. They're not not the best, but they're okay. Certainly not going to be you know a, a favorite of the network with numbers like that, but certainly not not that bad. So Star Trek Discovery. 15 million viewers and a 3.0 rating among adults 18 well, to 49. Yeah, well, it's Star Trek. So, uh, I told, almost... I told you, Oroville, it's going to be entertaining for probably about a year. Yeah. A season, maybe. But there's not much you can do with it. So, almost twice as many viewers unless he's, for Unless Star he's Trek. more than the genius than I think he is. You know, what he's done we'll with Family Guy. And, yeah. But I, I just don't... That type of show, you can only do, use so many gags. Yeah. So, now, here's my dilemma. You get 15 million viewers watching this, all right, which is very good numbers. That's that's respectable. It's very good. A 3.0 in the 18 to 49 market is very respectable, very good. Those are good numbers. Now you turn it over to CBS All Access. They only have a million subscribers. Really? One million, and their goal is four million by 2020. So you're going to have a lot less people watching than you would if it was on regular television. So I hope that it's enough to – now it's pay, so it's it's a little different. So, And they did see uh, membership levels skyrocket after the first episode. So people are paying and they are subscribing simply because of Star Trek, and that's what they wanted to happen. So it is working. But I'm just looking at it, and from uh, – I don't – listen, I don't know all the ins and outs of how to run a network, but I'm looking at that from, from my perspective, and I'm saying, geez, I got 15 million viewers, and I'm – now I'm down to one, one million viewers. Well, I got to be honest with you. As many times you explained it to me, and, and I'm getting it, but it's very confusing. It's a very, it's a very different thing using streaming is different than oh, regular uh, broadcast. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know. I, I, the I can't. older, and I'm not saying you, but I'm saying the older generation oh, is not yeah, going to never. They're gonna not going to get I'm, savvy to this. I'm sitting there going. How the hell do you go, you know, how do you look up a certain episode and how do you back to this? How do you do this? How do you do that? I mean, it, it's confusing. It, it, it can really be. Is. It can be confusing. I mean, you've been into it, a, you know. Like you for just, years already. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, for me, you just got me into this yep. since last Christmas and I'm lost. Yeah. This is the future of television. Streaming is the future. So let's let's see where it goes. It it, it might do well, but I just wanted to throw out those numbers for you to 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 show you what was going on. Before we wrap up this episode and go into episode two, now this was a two-parter, and episode two is Battle at the Binary Stars. I want to tie this into the Fountain of Thought podcast very briefly. If you listen to our Fountain of Thought podcast this week, uh, we talked about the NFL, the national anthem, and the players taking a knee. If you go onto our website, one of my embarrassing photos is the cast of Star Trek Discovery. Because on Monday morning, Discovery star Sonequa Martin-Green, who plays First Officer Michael Burnham, posted a photo of the Star Trek cast taking a knee with a hashtag, take a knee. So Star Trek has to bring politics into it. And uh, that didn't make me very happy. Nobody's perfect. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Any final thoughts on uh, the Vulcan hello? That would be illogical. All right. Then that's going to wrap it up for this episode, and we will see you for next week's episode, Battle of the Binary Stars.